I can hear you well. Thank you. I have a new audio setup and the same old video setup because it's the same old me. Hi. <laughs> I know Rick knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> not, not not <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, so let's, it, as long as it sounds okay, then, then we're good. I spent the whole morning on Zoom with my accountants. Oh, wonderful. I've... It's the end of the year planning for tax season. So today's November 8th, uh, 2022. And we've had a pretty amazing week. Uh, so for the stand-up, let's start with Z. You have the floor. Oh, my mic's not working today for what it's worth. Oh, oh, dear. Okay, so welcome, Z. And um, if you want to type, then I can read it out into the record or um, or catch up on Slack or anything like that. I'm terribly sorry about your mic situation. Oh, you're Sasha. So oh, hello, Sasha. <laughs> I figured it might be you. I have some reports for you. So while you have the floor... Um, and <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why your name shows up as Z either, but uh, these are life's little mysteries. Um, but yeah, so you were, uh, last week we talked briefly about um, addressing the RF chain. So what we really need to do is start looking at the RF equipment, radio frequency equipment, uh, microwave equipment for, that's going from the FPGA uh, output, or, or actually the RFIC output, like from the from the 809371 that we're using uh, to start looking around as this the path that we want to stick with. Um, any, pretty much any RFIC is going to be similar to the 9371 in terms of electrical interface. It's different in some ways, but but we're dealing with uh, digital equipment designed for space. And so let's look at the RF chain. So let's assume that you have these, um, that you have I's and Q's coming at you and that we're dealing with a 10 megahertz or whatever, uh, we want to to decide to to implement uh, for for your team, um, you know. So there's some flexibility there. Our flexibility is is limited. If we stick to amateur radio subbands, we have 10 megahertz to play with uh, for the downlink. That's at uh, approximately 10.4 gigahertz. Um, but we talked about supply chain challenges, and there's uh, some things are just not available. But assuming that we have, uh, you know, we we do have several labs with equipment that can produce. Um, you know, at least baseband signals that are properly modulated, what can we build? Um, and then you have some of the documents that we've been working on and some of the designs. Uh, I was able to meet with uh, with Jan King on this past Thursday. And we talked and that, that conversation is on our YouTube channel. Um, we talked a lot about a variety of things, brought this up. And so we're looking for additional people. He's out scouting out uh, folks that are interested in, in helping with this with this part. Uh, we also went on Thursday to SBMS, uh, San Bernardino and Micro Society, and we had some lots of side conversations about RF. So there's some enthusiasm there from some people recently retired from places like JPL that will, might be able to help us with building more RF. The big challenge though, just from a brief 15 minute tour of the world of components engineering is that um, it's not great out there still uh, for for buying the stuff that we need. So I'm open to suggestions, and we are going to have to be we're going to have to be scrappy and smart and um, you know agile and all that. Um, so it looks like if you if you if you have audio back, I don't know if you do or not, but um, you certainly have the floor. Splitting the, okay, so she's, yes, I was thinking of splitting the DAC side of things and the up conversion side of things. Yes, I think that we could do this and should do this and, and it's gotten a general, yeah, that's the way the way to go. Um, yeah, so the RFIC isn't available. We can have an alternate design ready to go. Yes, I think that would be good. I'll do all that I can to help. Uh, I'm not a RF expert, but um, I am ready to hit it with a tire iron as hard as I can. Yes, uh, JESD 204B is our baseline, so we really want the, to stay with that. That's why we went with the ADRV 9371 board in the first place, instead of picking something like the, the 9361 or older design. And it's just very powerful. The, the, 
the advantages to JSD 204B for those that are listening are are and are more than enough justification for dealing with the any sort of complexity or weirdness. And there is some complexity and weirdness because it's um, you know this is higher end uh, stuff. And there's more things to make sure that you get right, uh, which we've we found out the hard way several times. So. And let's see, we're definitely avoiding CMOS or LVDS, definitely set on, yes. So JESD 204B is our baseline, unless unless we find out that there's some better way to do it. But that's uh, that's the way everything's been going and all the advice from the industry people that we've talked to has been to do it. That's why we picked it in the first place. Um, so if, in terms of like RF uh, design, so if you're sitting around with um, some sort of ideas or parts or or designs that have been waiting for 10 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz or 2.4 or or 24 or 47 then now's the time to to share them all right and then then another note is there are definitely are DACs that take JSD and that should be enough to have an alternate design to work with around the 80 RFIC not being a stock yes I agree um, I would like more hours in the day so that I could <laughs> be more help other than just knowing that. Uh, but yeah, whatever I can do to to get this to happen, because um, we we firmly believe that it doesn't work until it works over the air and we demonstrate things. So that's how we get things done. We do publish uh, papers and designs and keep the repos up to date. And we we really do believe in documentation, but complete documentation is not something that's going to stop us from building uh, building and testing something over the air to show that that an idea uh, works. So uh, pr please proceed and we'll back you up uh, 100%. And then anything else, if you want to type it in chat, then we'll, okay, so I'll get started. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll start um, the email chains should pick up over the next week. Uh, I'll try very hard to to, to make sure that the all the stuff that has happened over the past week gets reflected to you quickly um, and that you get incorporated and and then you stay in these conversations. Um, so thank you so much for for all the work, Sasha. It's deeply appreciated. All right, James, you have the floor. All right. I'm um, reporting from Real Lab South. We don't have too much to report uh, this week, admittingly. We've been continuing our efforts in setting up more equipment over in our primary facility, but there's not too much to report, just continuous work and uh, no major roadblocks this week so far. Oh, good. Good to hear. I'm glad. Yeah, I've seen the the photographs of all of the stuff moving around. Um, so yeah, I um, I'll, as soon as we can accept a shipment of lab equipment, then, then we we need to um, just let me know and then I'll take care of the logistics on on that um, and I'm I'm pretty confident that it's going to be successful and popular lab especially with the variety of things that we've been talking about and we we do have another set of equipment from that's currently in Illinois and COVID delayed moving that we have uh, several large the several large dishes for the interferometry setup and and a lot of smaller ones um so it'd be great if we could get all of that moved at once but it's probably going to be as things go you know it'll be multiple you know organizational efforts it's hard to to manage two large moves to the same site at once um so yeah just as soon as possible would be great and if you need any any funding or any help at all then uh please just get in touch and thank you. It's, uh, it's awesome to have this. And, and I have uh, a lot of optimism that this particular place uh, will help so many people and make it possible for, for people to participate in, in some really neat uh, citizen science and, and open source engineering. All right, Paul, you have the floor. Well, that's working. Okay. Have to have the window active before the space bar will work. Uh, remote labs here in San Diego have been working. We've been using them as remote for the most part with occasional 
uh, visits to, to sneak a peek at the spectrum analyzer. Um, the remote video solution for the spectrum analyzer somehow has stopped working. I suspect it being a side effect of a Ubuntu upgrade, but I don't really know that. I've been trying different solutions, trying to get something rigged back up so people can look at the spectrum analyzer remotely. Mainly me from across the house, because it's easier than walking across to the remote lab to see what's on the screen. Um, but anybody else would be uh, uh, also convenienced by being able to get the video. So that's an ongoing investigation right now. And we discovered uh, another operating system version issue with the simulator. We tried to run the uh, the test bench for um, one of the sub modules that we use with the encoder. And uh, it didn't work. It didn't have all the necessary prerequisites on uh, the version 18 Ubuntu that we've been running on uh, Chaco Cat and Karapi. Uh, we, we chose that operating system specifically for compatibility with uh, something, Vivado, I guess. And we wanted to run that particular version of Vivado, which was known to work on version 18 and uh, somewhat suspect on later versions. But now we've got to be up at least version 21 in order to run the GHDL simulator uh, without going to a lot of trouble to build it from source and whatever problems that would cause. Um, so I've created uh, or actually upgraded another VM that you've probably never heard of called Nuts, N-U-T-Z. That's the name of a one of Karapi's friends in, in the... Hello Kitty universe. And uh, it's upgraded to fully to 22 uh, LTS. And it can run the simulator just fine. We ran the uh, the Python script uh, without too much trouble once we get all the prerequisites lined up. And this seems to be the way to go for at least uh, regression testing and production testing of HDL. So if anybody needs a version 22 VM on the remote lab, let me know and I'll get you hooked up with an account on Nets. Uh, and if people think that it's time to give up on version 18 for the main VMs, we can talk about upgrading them too, but I want to be pretty cautious about that. So we don't break things that people are relying on. Um, other than that, the remote labs are uh, remote lab here is, is working and uh, nothing too much new there. Uh, I've been working with Michelle on uh, taking a, a tire iron to the to the scruff of the neck of the, the problem of integrating the encoder, which works on Pluto, into the reference design on the ZC706. And that has turned out to be more of a big deal than we thought. So we have, uh, have broken down and accepted that we're going to have to write a custom interface module for the output of the encoder so that it can hook up to the, uh, the next thing in the chain in the reference design. It's not a standard interface. It's designed to hook up directly to a DMA interface, but it's very much like the Axie interface. So we're following along with the, the clues we found in other Axie interface uh, code and are just about ready to start writing some detailed uh, equations and code to, uh, to make that module work. And hopefully that will not be too much of a roadblock for too much longer. Uh, it's been fun. We've learned a lot and, uh, this hopefully will help us uh, with HDL work in the future. And I think that pretty much covers everything I have. I don't see any roadblocks going on right now, except for those projects that need to get done. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a that's a really good summary. The um the particular uh batch of of code that we're working with is a really neat set of open source FPGA cores called FPGA cores from Andre Swacho on uh, GitHub. And that DVB uh, cores is a sub-module of our uh, encoder, which is in the transponder you know, design. Um, so what we're doing is picking out the AXI uh, bus width converter and then adding the case for upsizing, which is was not in there. Uh, but instead of making a general case for, for this, uh, we're making the custom interface. So that will 
uh, go a long way to solving uh, kind of the tricky problem, which is sort of introduced because of the the type of, of interface that we have. Uh, JESD 204B is expecting um, a much wider interface than than perhaps people might expect. Um, and there may be some some byte reordering and things like that that need to go on. So it, it may not be a, a straight over uh, interface, but it's we should have some results. If not today, then uh, definitely by by next week. Um, other news in on the FPGA front, there's been some updates to the to the encoder. Uh, it looks like and some updates to uh, or to some of the other cores. Uh, so thank you very much to Andre for continuing to work on this. It's just fantastic. Um, there's a pretty much a global shortage of hardware engineers that do this sort of work. We are continually grateful for everybody that takes time to donate their work to us for free so we can have an open source HEO satellite project. Thank you. It is astounding that we continue to have uh, such wonderful people. Uh, we do our very best to make this a rewarding, uh, fun, and mutually beneficial uh, sort of deal. So if you know of somebody that might want to uh, either learn or donate their expertise, please let us know because we have lots of opportunities and we have plenty more projects uh, than than people as as usual uh, for for research institute. Um, and our one of our goals is uh, education and professional development. So just let us know if you if any of this sounds intriguing. Then then we have a home for you here. Uh, even if it's just you want to follow and support, uh, we could totally use the the support. Um, moral and otherwise. So uh, we do have uh, one of our regular folks is out for the next month. Uh, so Anshul, we're looking forward to him coming back, uh, but he won't be here uh, uh, working uh, for, for a while. Um, and a couple of other people have been on vacation. So um, we're looking forward to them coming back. So yeah, that's, that pretty much sums it up. Any questions or comments before we close the, the stand up part of the meeting? You want to plug the uh, video you posted with Jan? Yeah, there is a, a video. So the office hours with Jan King uh, talking about uh, pretty much the high level uh, open source HEO project, high for AIA, or high flyer, um, highly elliptical orbit, open source satellite work. Uh, we cover a lot of different things in the office hours. The next office hours meeting with him is the 10th of November, assuming every uh, schedules work out. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in hearing more about how the 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 satellite project is going, um, then go there, and I'll put uh, I'll put the link directly to it in the description for this for this video. Um, and yeah, if you if you want to pitch in anywhere from propulsion to attitude control to to what we're working on here, which is the communications. Uh, package, or if you want to make it easy for uh, payloads to be included, um, because that's that's important, uh, then then we need you. And I think we're we're lightest on mechanical and thermal. We don't really have a a deep bench there uh, because our our background and origin is uh, digital communications. So um, we always kind of assumed that there would be. Uh, we'd be providing communications packages to, to other organizations that had existing uh, mechanical and thermal. So we're lightest there, but I think the solution might be simply to uh, to work with uh, a company or purchase uh, something off the shelf because there's lots of options here. Um, that's a little less satisfying for open source, I think. Uh, it'd be nice to design it from scratch and machine it up in our garage, but um, whatever gets us there, uh, with as many people happy and fulfilled as is the goal. But yeah, there's a there's a video up and it's uh it's good and we'll have more soon. I think that that's probably more than just a plug. <laughs> I think, <you> know. <laughs> uh, uh, the next set of demos that we have scheduled is not until March 2023 really. Uh, will be a big part of Ham Expo. Uh, the QSO Today Ham Expo in March of 2023, and we some of our our projects like Versatune uh, and possibly Ribbit, but but it looks like nobody can afford to take the time off from their day job. Uh, will be at Hamcation, so uh, we 
we anticipate that we'll have a presence at Hamcation for uh, receiver projects for terrestrial work and whoever else wants to show. Um, but in terms of like spacecraft stuff and the the transponder for space, then we're then we're next looking at uh, public demonstrations in March of 2023. Uh, in between then and now, there'll be several articles uh, in around the world. Um, I've seen the draft for the JAMSAT journal that covers our project, and it's great. It's great. It's in Japanese, uh, so you know, plan accordingly. Um, and we have the uplink forward error correction article appearing in QEX, and more. Our more articles will be submitted. Um, I think that's 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 a, a good bet for for a lot of the work that we do. Uh, we're starting to look at IEEE as a place to to send work, but the the copyright situation and with with IEEE has always been problematic for people that do open source work. Um, you know, the paywalls and such for IEEE are pretty harsh, but we're getting to the point where that's the place where we should start thinking about um, about publishing. Um, you know, so that's that's the roundup for for um, for documenting. All of this stuff is available on our repositories. We now have 40 and uh, probably more coming with the work that we're looking at doing with propulsion. All right, any other questions or comments or anything I missed? <laughs> yeah, thank you to everyone for your time and attention and I'll be, we'll be working all week and uh, see you on Slack. And if you're if you're interested in joining, uh, we are openresearch.institute and getting started is the link on that page. And if you click it, it'll take you to how to join the announcement mailing list, how to get on to the newsletter, non-technical and accessible newsletter. Um, and then how to join Slack, which is where the engineering goes on and a few other resources like uh, you know YouTube account. So thank you to everybody. Could not do it without you. And we'll have lots of good news, I think, over the next week, and we'll do it again next week. <laughs>